Hello and welcome to part two of the mosaic processing tutorial. So we're just going to be doing a really quick one in Photoshop. So I'm going to start with PNG files. And so this could either be the result of whatever you process uh, using the fit files or however you get to this point. Um, or it could just be the, the PNG straight from Sloop. But either way, all these are that I'm going to be using are the fit files. I literally just open them up in a fit viewer and then save them as PNGs with the histogram stretch. So really no processing, but there could be a lot of processing and it'll work the same either way. What we're going to do is go ahead and open our set of test files here. So we just want to pick the PNGs and this is going to be the elephant trunk nebula, uh, courtesy of Hank, on the slew Discord. And this is a six panel mosaic, so a little bit simpler than some of the larger ones, but a little bit easier and slightly more quick, hopefully, to process. Uh, full disclosure, I did not practice this, so this is going to be live uh, trying it. So hopefully it all works out, but I think it'll be best that we everyone can kind of see the process. So we've got six panels. Uh, I just renamed them to one through six based off of where they are in the original mosaic plan. And we're going to open those. So now we have six files here representing the six panels of the mosaic. And we can see that each one is 2072 by 1411 pixels. So what we want to do is create a new document that is going to be two wide and three long or down, right? Because the mosaic is a two by three horizontal and then vertical. So what we can do is if you don't like to do math, then just open up the calculator. And 2072 times two gives us 4144, and that'll be our width. And then 1411 times three gives us 4233. And if you need to See what those values were. I think the most calculator lets you do this. I don't really use it that much. Yeah, there you go. So we have 4144 by 4233. So let's just make a new file here. We'll just make it a custom. So the width 40, 44, 42. And can't bring for two thirty three. All right. And the resolution uh, that's from a different project. So make sure it matches this uh, ninety six PPI pixels per inch. So we're just going to set it to be the same. Background make it transparent. And pixels can say square, and everything else can say essentially the same. If you had sixteen bit sources then change this to 16 bit but these are all rgb8 so they're 8 bit rgb so we'll just leave it the same as that Hit create so this will be the canvas that we start putting all of these on so let's just start with this one you can either go to select all or just hit control a and then you can do Edit copy, or just hit Control C, and then here edit paste, or hit Control V, and you'll see that it does not fill the whole window, which is correct because we don't want it to, because it is just one of the panels. So I like to paste these in in order because then your layer names will correspond to which one they are. So layer one is panel one. Go ahead and select the Move tool here, and we'll just generally move it to the right place. And now just go through and do this for all the other ones. And just real rough placement right now.
And it is good to note, um, you know, how your mosaic was set up. So I know that this one goes one, two, three, four, five, six, but sometimes like if you're using Telescopius, maybe it might turn out to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So just make sure you know ahead of time which way your mosaic was laid out. Now, most of these steps um, should be doable in something like GIMP, open source uh, photo editor like Photoshop. Uh, there may be one or two things that don't exist, but there should be some other workflow that will get you there. Okay, so now that we have all six, you can kind of see using the layers, how they all align um, on your canvas, like where they actually physically are, which is helpful because sometimes you can lose one, but here you can see where it's supposed to be. Go ahead and select all of the layers and change here in the layer display type. I like to start with screen. Uh, screen will kind of show you the overlap brightly, which will help you do some alignment. Okay, so now deselect layers, that way you're not moving them all at the same time. And let's zoom in a bit. The alt and scrolling up will zoom, or you can use the magnifying glass, uh, or probably change it in the view. So this is kind of just looking and trying to find the overlaps. So we can see right here, there is this little patch of stars and this little patch of stars, and those are the same. So we just want to bring those together. Now, one thing that's helpful is to go to view and snap and make sure that snap is not turned on, which it probably is by default because it'll be really hard for you to actually align these. So now I'm going to use the arrow keys, the up, down, left, right keys, and just try to get it in the right place. Now, it looks like there's star trails, and that is because these may have been imaged on different nights, or just the telescope rotated enough so that uh, you can't actually overlap them properly. That's okay. Just get it close. Close is good enough. So generally, probably try to pick a point on the top here and get that close. You can also do the middle. It'll generally work the same. We're going to fix this in, in a little bit to make it overlap better. All right, let's move down to this one. So we can see a bright star is probably that bright star. So let's just try that. And yeah, you see that the stars come together nicely there. And sometimes they align much better than other times, which is definitely nice. So this one, there's these three stars and these three stars. Let's just try putting those together. And we'll see that, yep, yeah, was aligned pretty well all the way across there. Now, I mean, you can do this in any order that you want. Um, I'm actually going to move this one out of the way for a second and redo it in a minute. Sometimes starting in the middle is best because that's where the focus of the image usually is. And it can just be kind of a better end result, but it really it's personal preference. Okay, so that's still pretty out of whack there. So I think what we're going to do is essentially align these three and align these three, I'm guessing that these actually don't have the star trailing problem when we're going vertically here instead of horizontally. So this and this, like that and that. So let's overlap those. And here, this, this and that, is that, that and that. So we'll do that. Interestingly, these actually all look pretty 
Good. So maybe originally I actually, and this happens, uh, I probably originally moved this too far in because this looks nice now. So sometimes just going at it from a different direction can help you align everything pretty well. So that is generally aligned. So I'm going to do this first the way that I think should also work in GIMP or any other editor of your choice because it doesn't use any fancy Photoshop tricks like auto align layers. Before we do that, let's just take a quick look again and make sure that we really are quite good on alignment, at least as much as we can be. Still just stick to one direction. So like I was just aligning this one, I'm just going to line this one. I'm not going to necessarily try to do these right now because then it'll throw it all off again. And if you align this one and this one here, then don't move this one to align these two, move this one, that way this will stay in place. If it's um, confusing or gets tricky to do that, you can just lock this layer and then it won't let you accidentally move it. So let's just go ahead and lock these two middle layers. And we can even lock these bottom ones, or at least the, this bottom left one, because we know that that's aligned. And this one is also aligned, so let's just lock that one too. So now we're just working with these top layers here. So we're using the arrow keys again, just to move it left and right a little bit. And it looks like that's pretty much right where it needs to go. That one looks pretty correct too. Hmm. It helps kind of just like when you're focusing a telescope um, or binoculars where you kind of go past the focus point and come back. I like to go past the alignment point and then come back. And I think it's easier to see that way that you're actually aligned. So this is a pretty quick alignment, but everything should be reasonably put together correctly. So now what we want to do is select all of our layers again. I don't think you need to unlock them, but I'm going to just because. And we can change from screen to something like dissolve. That looks OK. Let's see. Different things are going to work differently well. Um, usually dissolve works pretty well for me. If you use some of these like um, difference or uh, divide, you can definitely see where your overlap is not quite right. So that can be helpful when you're trying to really align them. Uh, color burn also work, um, but probably difference uh, or exclusion or divide work best for seeing because this is going to be showing like if you do different, this is going to be showing the difference between the two panels and versus where they're the same. So these are very close, whereas these are not quite as close. So let's try dissolve again. So the issue here, and this would actually probably be taken care of if these were processed and background removal was done, because the difference here is in the background gradients. Um, so this is probably actually light artifacting from this really bright star on the scope here, you know, causing some, some reflection there. Um, so this background is going to be at a different overall brightness. So if, if you do any image processing in Fix Insight or any other tool that you may use um, and subtract out the background, then you may not even have this problem and it might just work just by doing that, which was the case when I did um, some of the previous ones that I posted, like the Veil uh, or the North American Nebula. So let's just see what we can do here to make it look a little bit better. 
Um, and this is where we're going to get into Photoshop specific tools. So with all the layers selected, go to edit and go to auto blend layers. We want to do panorama mode. And then content aware fill transparent areas is definitely interesting. And so you see that we have these transparent areas around it. Um, content aware fill will actually just put fake stars in there, which can help it look more complete, but it is not true to the data, uh, if you want to think about it that way. One thing that can work is to trim this image first. Uh, trim it based on transparent pixels and then it will give you like the closest crop with the minimum amount of transparency to be able to fill all these panels in. so then we can go back to edit auto blend layers i'm going to go ahead and turn it on we can always get rid of it because it puts it in as a different layer mask so you can just hide it or get rid of it so like i said panorama because these aren't stacking images like where they're all the same when you like if you had three pictures of panel one, that's when you stack, but since these are mosaic and it's panorama, hit OK. And I'm doing this on my laptop, so this is going to be a slower process than it would be on like my PC or a computer, but it shows that this is a very modest laptop, so it can do this. It just takes a little bit longer. So it's doing a bunch of things. It's going to try to merge the color in here, and then it's going to create the fill. So that line that we had there that was pretty prominent is now gone. I'll go ahead and uh, deselect so you can see the edges where it did the fake fill. I mean, yes, you can tell, but it's not the main focus of the image, and I do think it looks a little bit more coherent. The same for down here. You can adjust the content aware fill. Um, if you want to get deeper into it, uh, if that's something that you want to know about, leave a comment and I'll do another video on that. But for now, this is just kind of filling it in. So just doing the layer blend, this is what we end up with. And I really don't think it's too bad. And you can see we can't see that line really anymore here. Um, definitely the very significant line that was there before, we can't see. And overall, it looks blended pretty nicely. I think. So that's the basics of processing a mosaic. From here, you could, of course, start playing around with whatever adjustments you want to do with curves and levels, brightness, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I'm just going to leave like this for now, since this is not an image processing tutorial, just a mosaic tutorial. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment and let me know if I can explain anything better, or if you'd like to see another tool or uh, a more complicated mosaic, I'm happy to do any of that. Thanks for watching.